Okay, so we're going to start off by talking about um, the user interface and like what some of the basic tools are and stuff. Let me make sure this microphone is good. Okay, so we're going to go uh, through some basic tools. Oh, let me turn the light off. Um, just type in grasshopper. That's the command. Um, there it is. Pops up. Um, so if you close it, it will um, stay active. So like, let's say I'm working on something and I and I do that and then I close it. I, it's actually still active and it records everything. So you can just go right back into it. So how you want to use the software is sort of up to you but I like to do this uh, sort of like semi split screen thing um, just because I think it's more clear to you guys what's happening in the software um, when you can see both sides at once. But once you get better at it, you might actually full screen it or if you're working on dual screen, you'll have your model screen and then you'll have your grasshopper screen, which is nice. Um, but basically, I want to kind of go through um, the types of tools that are present and, and generally like how we're going to navigate this thing. Um, so what you're going to see here at the top is a set of tabs, right? It's just like, just like the Rhino environment, but um, in this case, like these are all generators and modifiers of geometry. Um, so we're going to start off with params, and um, params are basically like, um, I guess it's sort of like a workflow thing for how you're moving data around. Um, and we're going to talk a lot about like data, right? What I showed you in, in class on Monday of last week um, was like the raw data for points um, in the in the in the 3D um, environment. But like this stuff, if I put this down, like I can pull it, I can pull in points and drop it into the workspace, and it's just an empty point param, right? It's like an empty node that will receive points. Does that make sense? Um, so when you want to reference a point, there are a couple of ways of doing it. Um, but most notably, I think you're going to drop whatever the geometry is into the workspace that you want to reference and work with. And then on that point, you'll right click it and you'll go to set one point. And then you set, set that point there. Okay. So that's if you're dropping that geometry in. Um, but if you're creating points, it's a little different. Um, you go to, um, Are you recording this? yes. Yeah. Thanks. Um, you go under vector and this is where a lot of like your directionally based things, um, are going to, uh, be chosen. So, um, here for point, um, you can actually pull in what's called construct point and construct point is going to create a point for you and you're going to be able to modify it by changing the different input values. Okay, so let's do that now because um, we're going to work with a few of these. Um, but if we have, uh, let's see, we have an X, a Y, and a Z, and they're all going to be numerical values, of course. Um, so when you go back into params and you go to input, one of the most basic tools that you're going to use, and you're going to use this relentlessly throughout the entire semester, is the number slider. Uh, the number slider looks like this when you drop it in. Um, and you can double click it to modify what its um, actual boundaries and, and parameters are. So when you double click it, you have all this. Um, we don't need to go through it in like too excruciating detail, but um, basically you can go positive and negative. Um, if you're going to go into negatives, then you have to start at a negative. Um, so we're going to go with minimum of negative 10 and a maximum of 10. Uh, double click on the slider. Click. Yeah, just double click here and it pulls this up. Oh, I see. Okay. So make it a 10 and a 10. And it should look like that. And then copy and paste to make three of them. So we'll go copy, paste, paste. And you've got three. And you all should know that control V is paste, right? All right, and what's kind of neat, if you guys are like really particular about things like I am, um, I like to kind of make it all super, you know, neat. So these things will allow you to sort of shift them into alignment. So if they're all out of alignment like this, you can sort of just shift it like that and get them all to be 
you know, in the same general uh, vicinity. But that's only for, you know, people who care too much like me. Do, do that again from the beginning, Kevin, please. Sure. The, uh, the slider thing? Yeah, the whole, the whole slider thing. Yeah, so um, basically all three of the, you're just the alignment part? Or uh, the whole thing? Okay. So, um, so just to repeat, guys, um, the number slider is under params. So on some of the params tab, the input. Oh, yeah, by the way. So... Uh, uh, when I say, I, like, I guess the, the words that I'm using for certain things are, are actually um, very specific. So when I say the params tab, I'm talking about this tab. And when I say the input panel, I'm talking about this panel, right? You have a set of panels within each tab. And then the tools, right? So the number slider is right there. So click the number slider, click it into the field, double click it to open it up, and then you can change your numerical values there. Okay. Um, negative ten, minimum negative ten, maximum ten. Okay. So that's uh, that's these guys. Ten. That's fine. Yeah. It'll drop in. It'll drop in as a default at point twenty five, point two five, I think. Um, so after that, if you're gonna clean them up, take it here, right? And then here's how you connect them but I want you to see something really important first. Um, so naming is going to become incredibly important because you guys are going to have to track backwards through your definition in order to understand what you've created. So what's kind of cool um, that Grasshopper does for you is whenever you plug something in, um, click on these little uh, white dots and you'll get this little wire that pops out. You have to, you have to hold it. So click and drag. Um, and then you put the wire onto the input node of wherever you want it to go, and then it will rename it for you, generally. So in this case, it renamed it to X coordinate. Um, and then when I drop these into the Y and the Z, that's going to be my Y coordinate and my Z coordinate. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, um, what this is going to do is allow us to move this point around in space. So we can kind of go backwards into negatives. We can go forward into positive, change the Y coordinate, and the Z coordinate. OK? What questions do you have? OK. So um, now that you know how to put this stuff uh, at least on the sheet and start building something, um, the data that you're going to be looking at is, well, actually, I'll just do that sort of in a separate video. I'll talk through what types of data and geometry we have in each panel.